All right, there we go. All right, hi. Uh, so as you said, I'm Nick. I'm with Covering Wisconsin. I'm a health insurance navigator. Um, so what that means is really I just help people go through the application process and sign up for health insurance. Um, I also do presentations like this and uh, help people understand health insurance and do health insurance literacy. So Covering Wisconsin has been around since 2003. Um, we were originally covering kids and families and then when the Affordable Care Act went into play and expanded coverage uh, for everyone, we expanded our focus. Uh, we serve the whole state actually, um, not just 23 counties, we serve the whole state. And we, like I said, conduct trainings and do um, how-to sheets. And I'll talk about some of those how-to sheets. So uh, our website, coveringwisconsin.org, and that is where all of our how-to sheets are housed. So if you go to our website and click on the yellow circle, um, I hope everybody can see the yellow over the screen. Um, you can get uh, BadgerCare as well as Marketplace, um, and they are sorted by which one. So we have a uh, how-to sheets on help for paying your medical bills, um, how to use Badger Care, how to first get signed up for Badger Care, and about 98% of our resources are in English as well as Spanish. Um, so if there is something that you're looking at in English um, and there's not a Spanish version, we always ask that you let us know and we can see what we can do about that. Uh, so the first sheet I'm going to talk about is our health insurance options sheet. So this sheet just uh, basically goes through the different options available to individuals to get health insurance. So uh, first and foremost, uh, the Affordable Care Act expanded the age that you're allowed to stay on your parents' coverage. So if you're under 26, um, you have the option to remain on your parents' plan from their employer or through the marketplace. Um, but of course, you do have options uh, outside of that. And the first one being health insurance from your own job. So um, if you do have uh, employment somewhere that offers you health insurance, that is the first step. Uh, taking employer insurance is basically uh, the preferred course of action. So the Affordable Care Act allows for you to go on the marketplace and obtain a tax credit if you have employer coverage, if it's deemed unaffordable. Um, and so unaffordable, unfortunately, is uh, not always the same <laughs> person to person, but the definition that the Affordable Care Act uses is a uh, little, little under 10% of your monthly income has to be what the premium is. So if you're over that, it's 9.86% uh, of your monthly income. Um, if the premium is above that, it is considered unaffordable and you would be eligible for a tax credit. If it's under that, unfortunately, you would not be eligible for a tax credit because the Affordable Care Act is saying that you have affordable coverage through your employer. Um, the second option that individuals have, uh, which I don't really think applies to this group uh, very much, but it would be Medicare, generally for individuals that are over 65. Um, and then Badger Care Plus is the Wisconsin State Medicaid program. Um, so federally, the program is known as Medicaid, and then in Wisconsin, uh, it is known as Badger Care Plus. So this program is for individuals who are at a lower income level. Um, the current income level for Badger Care Plus is uh, just under $1,100 a month to be eligible for a single person household. And so um, Badger Care, then one of the nice things about Badger Care Plus is that it is pretty much 100% coverage on everything. So if you are eligible for Badger Care Plus, um, that is a route that you would want to take a look at. And then the last option on our sheet here is the marketplace. 
So you would be eligible for the marketplace, again, if you are not eligible for employer coverage, and if you're not eligible for Badger Care Plus, um, the marketplace would be where you want to look. And the marketplace has tax credits available for individuals to make it more affordable. Um, okay. So um, having health insurance is important. Uh, I think somebody asked a question. Yep, yeah, um, so this uh, presentation will focus mostly on Wisconsin, um, but the Affordable Care Act, uh, the marketplace is a federal program, so every state has a version of the marketplace. So it's important to have health insurance. You wanna maintain your health. Um, it's a lot less expensive for services. Um, medical bills for accidents or unexpected sicknesses. Um, I always like to tell people who are kind of on the fence about signing up for health insurance. Um, you know, you may have a clinic you go to or some other um, way of getting your health care, but I always like to say, well, what if you got hit by a bus on a Sunday? Um, you're not gonna be able to get into those free clinics. Um, and if you're in the ER, those bills can add up quickly. Okay, um, so your options for health insurance, uh, they depend on your household uh, size. So that's who you file taxes with, um, especially through the Affordable Care Act. They look at the tax household, the individuals living in your house and the income on your taxes, um, how big the family size is. So for the Medicaid or Badger Care Plus programs, um, the family size is taken into account for the income limits, uh, as well as filing tax filing status. So um, one of the other rules for the marketplace is if you are married, you do have to file jointly in order to be eligible for that tax credit. Um, again, age, as I said, um, you know, Medicare is mostly 65 and older. Uh, you are able to stay on your parents' coverage until the age of 26, uh, if that's available to you, as well as immigration status. And uh, also tribal members have some different um, benefits that are afforded to them through the Affordable Care Act. Um, and then each person might not be eligible for the same thing in the household. Um, so what that means is if you have children, yeah, maybe your children are eligible for Medicaid, uh, but you're eligible for the marketplace, or maybe there's a difference between you and your spouse. So there's two groups on your marketplace coverage, um, and you can each sign up for a different plan based on what you personally qualify for. So uh, one of the other forms that we have is this affordability worksheet. So as I was talking about before, uh, if you're offered coverage through your job, you have to figure out if it is affordable according to the ACA's rules. Um, so this sheet is just a really easy way to do that. You can get this again on Covering Wisconsin's website. Uh, so going through this sheet, uh, it just asks you, if you're eligible for coverage through your employer, if it meets the eligibility standards, um, and so that is if it covers what they call minimum essential um, benefits, and so that's generally any of your um, preventative health care type needs, and then how much you have to pay, and then the next box splits up all your income for the month times uh, that figure, and this image is a little um, outdated. But uh, the one on our website does have the correct figure in there, and you can do the quick math and figure out if you would be possibly eligible for a tax credit or not if you are offered employer coverage. Again, um, Medicare, there are a few different ways, but um, the most prevalent one is being 65 or older, which again, I don't think really applies to uh, this audience. And then uh, Badger Care Plus. So in Wisconsin, like I said, um, Medicaid is the federal program. Badger Care Plus is the name of it here in Wisconsin. And then the uh, actual health card that you would receive 
would be that forward health card that's there on the screen. Um, I'm, so it gets a little confusing, but um, basically all you need to know is that it is called Badger Care Plus in Wisconsin, and if you are eligible for it, you will get a card that says forward health. Um, when you're signing up for Badger Care Plus, though, you can also sign up for food share um, and child care assistance. It's all one application. It's just a few more uh, boxes to check on the application. And that application is available at the access.wisconsin.gov website. And they also have an app that you can download, uh, which is My Access. Uh, you can't apply on the app, but you can submit any documentation and you can keep up with your case through that app. Okay, and then, um, so this is just kind of an example of what it looks like to possibly qualify for Badger Care. And um, I didn't mention this before, but pregnant women and children uh, qualify at different income amounts. The income amounts are slightly higher for pregnant women and children. Um, I think somebody has a question. Uh, let's see, if you wanna um, go ahead and Maybe put it in the question box. I think everybody is muted, so I don't know that I can. Yeah, if, if anyone has a question, rather than raising hands, we see the Q&A option at the bottom of the screen. We can field the questions from there. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so for this example, the um, household size is four people and they make about $75,000 a year. So what that would mean is that, no, the men and women uh, in the household, the adults would not qualify, um, but if the woman was pregnant, she would qualify as well as any children. Um, as I said, the income limits are higher for pregnant women and children. Um, and that is over here on this chart. Um, and this chart is on most of the how-to sheets that Covering Wisconsin puts out um, that pertain to Badger Care Plus. So, and then um, we'll talk a little bit more about the marketplace, which is also known as Obamacare um, or the Affordable Care Act. So just about anybody can get a marketplace plan, um, but not everybody is eligible for the financial help. So um, as I said, that depends on your income and household size. And uh, one of the things about the marketplace is that they are generally bound to an open enrollment period where with Badger Care, you can sign up throughout the year. Uh, marketplace, the open enrollment is November 1st through December 15th. And that is at healthcare.gov. Um, now, if you do have certain circumstances, uh, you may be eligible for a marketplace special enrollment period. And so um, again, this is one of the other how-to sheets we have that talks about uh, some of the special enrollment periods. Uh, if you have a loss of coverage, so if you lose coverage from your job, um, if you become uneligible for Badger Care Plus, if you're turning 26 and you're losing your parents' coverage, um, all of those would qualify you for a special enrollment period. Also, um, if you're moving, um, and by moving they mean out, uh, out into another zip code. So um, if you're having a larger move and you're changing zip codes, you would be eligible for a special enrollment period. Um, as well as changes in household size. So um, all of that would make you eligible as well as, as, well as immigration status. Um, so if you become a US citizen um, or you get your green card, those would make you eligible for a special enrollment period. Um, and then um, release from incarceration also uh, constitutes a special enrollment period. So um, again, this just talks about uh, being able to remain on your parents' coverage until you turn 26, if that's an option for you. And then, um, so we usually offer in-person assistance. Um, right now we're doing all of our assistance virtually and um, by the phone, but uh, you can still find that local help by calling 211. Um, 
and letting them know that you're looking for enrollment assistance and they can connect you with one of the enrollment assisters um, that are in your area. You can also go on to Covering Wisconsin's website um, and click on our connector tool uh, shown here and enter your zip code and you can sign up for an appointment yourself. And then, um, of course, you can always uh, call Covering Wisconsin directly. Um, the phone number is listed here. And so th those are, that's pretty much the options that you have for health insurance. Um, I'm gonna go through next a little bit of the basics of health insurance, um, some definitions and some things that'll help you understand and use the health insurance once you have the coverage. Um, so let me, just see. Um, and also one of the other um, resources that we have created at Covering Wisconsin is this community resource guide. This is on our website um, and there is one for all 72 counties within the state of Wisconsin. And this has all um, different types of local assistance that you may need. Again, uh, there's my contact information. And me see if I can switch to the next slideshow, and I'm hoping you guys can see this. Yep. Okay, great. Um, all right. So I already kind of talked about who Covering Wisconsin is, so I'll skip that slide. Um, but again, uh, it, health insurance is very difficult to understand and use, and that's why we're here. We want to not only help people get enrolled in health coverage, we want to make sure that people are able to use their health coverage. Um, so again, our how-to sheets are a really great resource. Um, and right now they're all on our websites, as well as if you reach out to us uh, with a specific issue, we can always send you some of our how-to guides. One of the first uh, things is getting started using your health insurance and understanding the costs. Um, so if you choose a plan that has a premium, um, you'll wanna make sure that you can afford to pay that premium every month. Also um, understanding what the out-of-pocket costs are going to be. So uh, premium is just what you pay every month to be enrolled in the health insurance plan. So. Same thing as like a gym membership or paying your cell phone bill. Um, you pay every month. Uh, you may not use the health insurance every month, but it, you know you have it. Um, so yeah, I, th I think kind of like most people's gym memberships right now. <laughs> um, the out-of-pocket costs. So there's the deductible, the copay, and the coinsurance. So out-of-pocket costs are not included in the monthly premium. This is an amount that you're going to pay in addition to those premiums. Uh, a deductible, so that's the amount that you would need to pay before the insurance company would start paying. Um, so there are some services though that are covered pre-deductible. Um, so like your yearly checkup is free even if you haven't paid your deductible and a few other things depending on the plan. Um, each plan is different. Uh, there are across the board, like the yearly checkup that is free pre-deductible for every plan, um, but then each plan does have its own services that are covered pre-deductible and that is different based on whichever plan that you choose. Uh, co-pays and co-insurance. So the co-pay is the fixed amount you pay for a service. So, um, say that you have a plan that is 80% coverage, um, your copay would be $20 for a $100 doctor visit. And so you would know every time that you walk into your doctor's office for a visit, you would be paying $20. Um, coinsurance is slightly different. Uh, coinsurance is a percentage. So again, um, if you have a $100 doctor visit, um, and your coinsurance is 30%, you're gonna pay $30. Um, they're very similar, but slightly different. Uh, copays are fixed, where coinsurance is a percentage of the bill. So um, I guess the best way to think about that, so even if your doctor's visit was say 
$200 and you had a copay, your copay would still be $20. Uh, where if you had coinsurance and your doctor's visit was $200, your coinsurance uh, would be $60. So that's, that's the difference there. Uh, there are three stages to using health insurance during the year. So the first stage, uh, that's where you pay everything out of pocket. That's the point where you are trying to meet your deductible. Um, so you pay for health care up until you meet that deductible. The second stage is you pay co-pays or co-insurance, um, and then the insurance plan pays the rest. And then the third stage, and this is um, if the plan has an out-of-pocket maximum, and if you meet that out-of-pocket maximum, so um, the insurance would pay 100%. So an out-of-pocket maximum is the most you'll pay in one year for covered services um, in addition to the premium. So you're going to pay the premium no matter what every month, um, but these other costs vary based on each plan. So uh, for example, uh, if Gabriel, has to pay everything. His deductible is $1,500. So Gabriel has a few health issues and he goes to the doctor a couple times and ends up meeting his $1,500 deductible. Then he would have another $1,000 to pay until he reaches that $2,500 out-of-pocket maximum. And once he reaches that $25 out-of-pocket maximum, any health coverage or health care that he receives for the remainder of that year would be covered 100% by the insurance plan. And so you can see the little calculation. Um, if the premium is $400 a month, um, which this, this example is um, very high as far as the um, numbers, so don't, don't get uh, too scared by that. Um, everyone's situation is different. But so if Gabriel has a $405 a month premium, that's $4,860 a year. And then adding the out-of-pocket maximum to that. So his possible health care costs for that year would be just over $7,000. Um, as I said, the example is a very high um, amount most of the premiums that, that people can expect to see are gonna be significantly lower than that. And then you do wanna you know, make good financial choices for your budget. Um, so you wanna consider the plan that maybe um, if it has lower premiums, it'll have higher out-of-pocket costs. So what that means is every month it will cost you less, but if something happens, you will have a higher bill to pay um, versus higher premiums with lower out-of-pocket costs. So monthly you're paying higher, um, however it's less risky, so that if something were to happen, you wouldn't have such high medical bills. Um, we always want people to consider, you know, if they have a chronic condition or if they are expecting any healthcare expenses for the next year, that they pay attention to the out-of-pocket maximums. And then uh, network doctors and specialists. So um, each insurance plan has a different network. So it's important to find a plan that will cover the doctors uh, that you need to see. Or if there are some, if there is a doctor out of network, will the insurance uh, plan cover that at all? It, will it cover it at a lower amount? Um, how much is that going to increase your yearly estimate of cost? And prescriptions, uh, so every insurance company has a formulary, which is the list of drugs or medicine that your insurance covers. Uh, so generic prescriptions are generally gonna be the most affordable. Um, Non-preferred brand name drugs, so those are gonna cost more than preferred brand name drugs. And then, um, so what that means is either there is no, um, generic available or for some reason the doctor is saying that you have to take the name brand so those are going to cost the most and then um, specialty drugs are 
going to run the most money even with the insurance coverage. Um, and those specialty drugs are going to be more of like the cancer prescriptions, things on that level. Okay, um, so again, the considerations uh, that you want to think about when you're picking a plan, that's going to be what is your deductible, what are the co-pays, um, how much are the prescriptions going to cost, and what's the maximum um, amount you can pay for, for the year, and is there an out-of-pocket maximum on the health plan. So, and I do have just a few tips um, on saving some money. So, um, again, most hospitals have financial help um, and payment plans. Even if you have insurance coverage, it never hurts to speak to the financial counselor at the hospital um, if you were admitted or had to go to the hospital for some reason. Um, you can always ask if different treatments are available that do the same thing but cost less. Um, most prescriptions uh, and drug companies have financial assistance, either coupons that you can use, um, some in addition to your insurance, some you cannot use with insurance. Um, sometimes you can get a prescription directly from the manufacturer for free through some of their financial help uh, programs. And then you always want to ask the insurance company if your doctors are in network and if the treatment is covered uh, before receiving the treatment. You can also ask your doctor um, what network they're covered in when you're looking at a plan. Um, most offices should know. Um, generally, it's a little bit quicker to speak to the billing department. They're going to know a little bit more off the top of their head which insurance plans that they are in network with. And then if you can't pay your medical bills, um, you can call the office and confirm the charges. Um, again, talk to the financial counselors. Let them know you're having trouble. Um, they may have some financial assistance available. And then there is uh, the programs, which is the financial assistance. So. And then these are just some more uh, resources to use. And um, that is what I had for you guys. Um, I can, if anybody has any questions, again, if you want to put them in the Q&A box, I can try to answer them for you. And everybody, if you have a chance to copy down the email uh, or take a screenshot, now would be the time to do it. And like Nick said, uh, we can hang on here for a second with questions. In the meantime, thank you, Nick, for joining us today. I'm sure you guys are busy with everything that's happening right now. So yeah, uh, I thank you for reaching out. Um, yeah, so we are, like I said, we are still available. We're doing all of our assistance by phone right now, um, but we are still here. So if anybody does need any assistance, uh, please give us a call um, or call 211 to find somebody um, more local to your area. And it looks like someone asked if, you could go back to the previous slide. Uh, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. There you go. Appreciate it. And I think we'll wrap up here in a second. If anyone uh, does end up having questions you didn't want to ask now or they come to you later, shoot uh, Nick an email if you grab his contact info. Otherwise, anyone, myself, Meg, and Sway will be available as well uh, to connect.